everybody, it's Tyler here at the Texas Cup, checking out team number 624, Kryptonite, coming from Katy, Texas. And joining me to speak about this robot, it's going to be Arshan, Kina, Leo, and Sasha. And we're going to be diving a bit more into this modified 2020 robot here. Lots of cool stuff going on. Kryptonite, fantastic team here from Texas. Going through the power cell journey into a cool climber. A little bit more on what they're doing for Autonomous, all here coming up on Behind the Bumpers. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting fun so we can continue to make content for you. Stryker makes some of the most revolutionary medical equipment and is a big supporter of FIRST and its participants. If you are looking for an internship or a career that supports you being in FIRST, check out careers.stryker.com to learn more. If your team or organization is hosting an off-season event, did you know you can stream it right here on First Updates Now for free? Events that stream on First Updates Now receive an additional 25 to 100% additional viewership because we help you promote your event on a large platform. If you're interested, reach out to us on any of our social platforms, on Discord, or send us an email at admin at firstupdatesnow.com. Let's get your off-season event streaming on First Updates Now. Hurry, dates are booking fast, and we take first come, first serve for all our events. So Arshan, as we go into this robot, we're gonna be starting off with the intake here. Talk to me about what you have for your intake and hopper, and then maybe any modifications you made as well too from 2020 into 2021. Right, yeah, so going into our first competition at 2020, we only had a two roller intake, so it was a, just a wheel like this and one versa roller. Sure. And we saw a lot of issues with that. It didn't come up as high as this one does. And it sometimes balls would pop out, so, after our event at Dripping Springs, we went and we redesigned the intake to use our four bar linkage and to have three rollers on it. And this has resulted us in not losing any balls when we intake. So the added roller in here, this is really, is it just meant to really keep it from popping back out or is it also grabbing the power cell to bring it in too? So it does both. It actually does help it get the balls over this initial like bump for the hopper. Sure. And it does retain them and they do not come out. Okay, Let, let's let's go into the hopper first as they're fixing that. Um, so obviously some polycord bring it in. Uh, I really want to hear like how do you prevent like jamming and that sort of thing from happening in there? Yeah, so obviously it's a gravity fed. We do have a few zip ties on this right side polycord, not on the left side. So if there are balls stuck, the zip ties will unhitch un one and it'll go in front of the other. If we had them on both sides, they would both get hit at the same time. It wouldn't work. So we use these zip ties to prevent jamming in the hopper, and it's actually helped us a lot. Well, that's interesting. So so you just have a few on there, and it's just yeah. on one of the sides, right, yeah. it looks like? Okay, so why not put it on both? Right, yeah, so if they were on both, then the two power cells stuck here, both of them would get oh, hit, okay. and they yeah, I guess. forward simultaneously. <laughs> that, that makes sense on that. So. Um, so we're gonna watch this go in a second here. Um, why don't we talk about, can we jump in and we'll talk about the shooter a little bit, uh, first with Kina, uh, and then we'll kind of show that whole process go through. So it looks like you got a turret uh, on this, and then, so I'd love to hear about that process, and then, uh, you know, adjustable hood or not, uh, and how you're going about that, and any changes from 2020 as well. Yeah, so when we were originally designing this robot, we knew that because of our tank drive style, uh, we were stuck with a limited, like we can only go back and forth, really, in terms of movement. So in order to get the best possible maneuverability for our robot, we decided to go with an actuated uh, turret. So you can see that the turret spins right here, and then the, sh uh, the hood also moves up and it's adjustable, which really allows us to shoot from anywhere on the field accurately. We also use um, a custom sensor set up up here to help find um, and locate our target, so that way we can really not have to worry about the people on our team manually adjusting when we're on the field and really focus on just getting balls, running fast cycle times and going really fast. So yeah. I think we're good with the robot. So let's check out some of the intake here and then we'll see uh, just a little bit how that maybe that hood works as well. So the balls do pop up a bit in there. Have you had any issues with them actually like fully like flying out as you've been intaking uh, on the fly? No, we haven't. Even when we're moving at pretty fast speeds, they tend to stay in here. I think it's largely due to the fact that we have a frame right here, as you can see. We have these four bars on each side and they provide kind of a structure to keep everything in, kind of like a basket. Sure. So um, 
Even if they pop up, they usually hit against one of these and they knocked back down into our hopper area. Uh, I want to go back on your shooter here. You guys have an uh, absolutely massive flywheel set up yes. uh, for this. So, uh, like, how many pounds does this weigh? Because the Colsons themselves are huge, and then you got the extra metal on. Uh, so, how long does it take for the shooter to speed up, and then what's the whole weight for all of it? Um. So, uh, so the way we're doing it right now is that we have an idle spin on our shooter. Uh, so, it's maybe going at, like, half throttle the whole match. Um, so, that really helps us uh, speed up to the right RPM sure. faster. Um, it doesn't take too long, maybe like at most two seconds if sure. you're going at like a back turn shot. And obviously but you can maintain the speed pretty well that way yeah, then yeah, too, course. right? Yeah, so. that, that's the point of the body. Yeah. yeah. Um, so let's actually, if you don't mind, let's go into the climber. So I think Sasha, you're going to be uh, covering that, right? Uh, so we'll take a look. We'll see the climber go up and tell me a little bit more about the structures and features of it. So the way that our climber works is it's piston powered, of course. But so it's this piston here which comes up and then instead of having two pistons or something, we actually have an interesting pulley system used by this one rope. It's just, it's fixed. So we have a fixed point here and we have a fixed point here on the other end. And if you can actuate the climber. So what happens is because this rope is fixed and it's attached here, it allows this wheel to turn, which lifts up the top arm for us. And then beyond that, that's just how we get the arms up. The hooks actually are attached through this rope if you can lower that down a bit, that would be. So once it's actually attached to a bar, this will hook up and it'll hang from the bar like this and it can move whichever way it needs to. And we have this string, which we call the winch string, which attaches to a winch down here, which is all on a single motor for both of those lines. And as that comes down, it lifts up our robot. So one of the things I want to ask, so you have two separate motors, right? Putting this up or is this on uh, the same, no, same one motor, motor chain? So as it goes up, though, it does look a little bit like uneven, right? So yeah. how does that work from a drive train perspective or a drive team perspective of, uh, you know, when you line it up to try to get it correct? So the only reason it's uneven is because when you're tying the ropes, it's a little uneven and it's hard to get perfect. Sure. But the hard stops on the end here make sure that once it's actually at full height, it's going to be level. So you can just drive forward once it's up at full height and then you just go down. And as long as this part of the hook is touching, you're pretty much guaranteed to go up. You just have to make sure that both the hooks are actually touching the bar. Otherwise, like our first match here, uh, you'll only have one arm attached, which can lead to a couple of difficulties. Fair enough on that. So let's wrap up on this robot. Uh, Leo, we're gonna be talking a little bit more uh, about some of the autonomous and sensors and maybe showing off the dashboard on the computer a little sure. bit too. So uh, the way we have our uh, programming set up is that we have the Robo Rio um, and that's running LabVIEW. And we have a custom dashboard for that. And that mainly does the state machine stuff. Um, for the robot, and then we have a separate coprocessor called the Upward, and it's right on this, uh, right over here, the blue box. And uh, over there, we have like a website where we draw the, plat the paths that we want the robot to follow during autonomous, and we also do custom vision tracking with a camera right here on the turret. Um, and then as for sensors, we have encoders on uh, the wheels as well as a Navix, um, and then we also have this. Uh, uh, this tracking camera on the front, and we use that uh, as another source of sensors. The, the, the custom sensor thing you mentioned, it, it kind of looks like a like a how we've seen line lights work, right? Yeah, but obviously yeah. a little bit different. Can you talk about the custom work in it? Like, what does custom mean to you in that? Um, it's just we use OpenCV, and we do that sure. ourselves. Uh, so it's just more configurable. Uh, we can change the parameters a little bit easier. Um, and yeah, we, it's it's we've seen good results. It tracks perfectly fine and all that. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, 624 Kryptonite, once again, thanks again for taking the time to uh, speak with us about your robot here. Uh, looking forward to seeing, of course, how you uh, compete here at Texas Cup, and uh, can't wait to follow you in future seasons as well. So thanks a lot, guys. Yeah, thank you. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting this video. Stryker is looking for current and future FIRST alumni to join their internship program, and FIRST mentors who are looking for a great career with the company who actually supports their FIRST journey. Go to careers.stryker.com to learn more. You can also directly support Fun by joining Fun Nation. Click the Join button, and just for a few bucks a month, you'll unlock special perks and directly support us so we can keep making great content. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.